Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome to IT Snippets. Today I'm going to show you how to turn a Raspberry Pi into an always on torrent box using transmission. So let's get started. The first thing we'll have to do is obviously prepare our Raspberry Pi. In order to install the image, we can use Raspberry Pi's own software, which is called the Raspberry Pi Imager. You can get that by going to www.raspberrypi.org software and then clicking Download for Windows. Once it's been downloaded, you install it like any other Windows application. In order to run it, click on your start bar and click on Raspberry Pi Imager. When user account control kicks in, say yes. As you can see, it's now popping up in front of me. I have inserted my micro SD card into my micro SD card reader. In this case, I've got one built into the laptop that I use for editing. We're going to click Choose OS. We're going to select Raspberry Pi Other. I'm going to select Raspberry Pi Lite because I'm going to build this as a headless server. And then I'm going to click and choose storage. I'm going to select my 8 gigabyte, as you can see here, 8 gigabyte SD card. And then I'm going to click Right. Before clicking right, ensure that the SD card that you have in is either blank or does not contain information you would like to maintain and keep. It says all existing data in SDHC card will be erased or you should wish to continue. So again, it's giving you a warning like I just did. But yes, ignore the cancel when it pops up. Okay, just like previously, you can cancel this alert and this one too. You can see when I get confirmation, that it's safe to remove the SD card from the reader and that it's been successfully written. So I'm going to click continue. I'm going to come out of Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm going to eject my SD card and then put it back in because I want to write a file to it to make it boot up with SSH enabled on my headless system. So let's just do that. So again, I cancel these prompts. As you can see, it's opened up to the SD card. I right click, do new text document. I do control A, to select everything and just type SSH with capitals and hit return. It says, do I wish to change file name extension? File may become unusable, are you sure? If I want to say yes. And that's that. I can now right click on it and eject it and place it inside my Raspberry Pi. Okay, I'm just going to wait for my Raspberry Pi to boot up and then I'm going to scan my network for it. Unfortunately, my screen capture doesn't work for my Raspberry Pi, so I'm just going to have to try and SSH the box when it comes up after waiting a short period of time to give it time to actually boot. Okay, my Raspberry Pi has booted up, so I'm going to use a program called Angry IP Scanner to find it. I have done a previous tutorial on Angry IP Scanner and how to use it and how to install it. You can go check out that tutorial if required. I'm just going to click start to scan my network and what I'm doing is I'm looking for one that's got the host name at a Raspberry Pi, which is the default for your Raspberry Pi. Okay, it's told me it's done. If I sort these by host name, there we go, 192.168.0.56. So I'm going to open my terminal program. As you can see, I've previously connected to a 192.168.0.56. Let's see if that works. It's warning me that the remote identification has changed. That's because I've obviously previously had a Raspberry Pi on this address. So I'm just going to click yes, that's fine. There we go, I'm now logged into the Raspberry Pi. As with any Raspberry Pi, the first thing you should do is do SU to change the super user and then do apt get update dash y. The dash Y means it will assume yes on any prompts. And then add upgrade dash Y. This will upgrade any available piece of software. And as you can see, there is stuff to be installed. So we'll wait for that to happen. Okay, after an update, I would always do sudo reboot, reboot the Raspberry Pi. And we'll just give it a moment to reboot. 
Okay, and that's rebooted. So just click R to reconnect. I'm um, reconnected. So I'll do the screen. Okay, before I go any further, if you're using your torrent box for something illegal, and I'll insert my disclaimer after this, you should be using a VPN. If you're not, you're risking legal issues. And in countries like the UK, your ISP is obligated to provide information to the Federation Against Copyright Theft if you, they believe that you have broken the law. All IT snippet tutorials are provided for information only. If you use information therefore provided to break the law in any way, shape or form, IT snippets is not responsible for your actions. This information is available free of charge. Please ensure that you are following the laws of your country and know the risks that you accept should you choose to use the information provided for nefarious purposes. With that in mind, first thing I'm going to install is OpenVPN. So I'm going to do sudo su to become super user. Now that I'm a super user, I'm going to do apt get install open vpn spell it correctly dash y and i'm going to hit return okay and that's been installed i need to change to the folder that open vpn installs to which is etc slash open vpn so to do that we do cd slash etc slash open vpn and we'll have to download the configuration file from our vpn provider so in order to do this i'm going to do it on a separate video separate window just now in most cases you'd go to your vpn provider's website in my case i'm using select vpn you would click on locations if it's there and you would choose which one you want to use so for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to choose manchester and i'm using open vpn so i'm going to right click that and i'm going to copy link just move that off screen just now so now i'm going to use the command in line it's wget and I'm going to paste in the URL that it just gave me. Now if I clear the screen again and do NLS, you'll see I now have gw1.man2.select.openvpn. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to move, using the command mv, gw1.openvpn, but I want to move it to gw1, change the openvpn to .conf. Now we should have changed it to .conf because that is what OpenVPN prefers. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to create a file called creds.txt or something along those lines. So this is going to contain our username and password, so I'm going to do nano. And this file would be username password. Obviously I'm not going to show you my username and password, so I'm going to do a jump cut and I will be back with you once the information has been entered. Okay, now that I've created my creds file, what I'll have to do is I'll have to edit my configuration file in order to tell it to look in the creds file. So to do that, I do nano, and I edit the gw1.conf file, which is my internet provider, or rather my VPN provider's config file. At the line here, auth user underscore pass, I do slash etc, slash open vpn, slash creds.txt. Do control X and Y in order to save that. Now we need to tell it to open all of the VPNs that are in the configuration folder. So in this case, there is only one, and set them up when the system boots. If I do nano slash etc slash default slash open VPN, and see right here, you can see we have auto start all, auto start none, or auto start home office. If you only have the one, like we do, one configuration file, just change that. Delete that hashtag so it says it'll start all. Control X and Y. And then we need to do a reboot and see if it connects. So let's reboot it and give it a moment. Okay, now that we've rebooted, we need to change to the super users. So do sudo su to do so. And then clear the screen and to install transmission, do app get install transmission dash daemon d a e m o n dash y. And I've spelled that correctly, it should try and install transmission. And there we go. Okay, so now what we have to do is we need to see if transmission is installed. So what I'll do is I'll just bring in a browser and I'll enter the details. Now you use the IP address of the system, so in this case it's 192.168.0.56. And transmission is import 9091, so we enter colon 9091 and hit return. And it's telling me that it's forbidden because I have an unauthorized IP. We will fix that in a minute, so let's just do that. So I'll just move this out of the way just now. 
and we will configure transmission correctly. So the transmission daemon config file is, well, we'll have to edit it so we'll be using Nano, but the path to it is slash etc slash init.d transmission daemon. Hit return. Inside here, we're going to change the username. We're going to change it to i so that it's running as the same user as our Raspberry Pi. We're now control X and click Y. Now we need to edit the next config file. So again, it's nano. In this case, it's slash var slash lib slash transmission daemon. Dot config again transmission daemon and it's settings dot json okay this is the main config file for transmission so the main things we have to change in here is we need to scroll all the way down i need to do something before that so let me control x to jump out of there we'll need to stop transmission running otherwise this file will not edit correctly so in order to stop transmission running we do sudo etc and the transmission daemon stop. Okay, now we can edit this file again. So because we're only saving the torrents to the SSD, and I wouldn't recommend that. I'll do a tutorial on a better way to do that. Because obviously, if you're constantly writing to an SSD, it will kill the SSD. But the two things that we want to edit in here: if we change this RPC whitelist enabled to false, that will let us log in from anywhere. That will fix the error that we got the four three error that I just showed you. We're going to change the username from transmission. Pi, so that's the RPC username. And this RPC password, what we're going to do in here is just delete everything that's in there and then take the password that we want. So in this case, I'm just going to make it spike 1690. Okay, do control X and Y to save this. And then we will restart our transmission daemon by going sudo slash etc slash net.d slash transmission dash daemon space start and return. Okay. So if I now go back to the web page, bring that back in. Okay, if I have to refresh it, it's asking me to log in. We'll use the password pi and spike1690 with the password. It's asking me to save the password. Click never just now. And there we go. We actually now have transmission installed. So let's find, let's go and download an Ubuntu torrent. Okay, so I'll just do Ubuntu torrent and I'll search for it. Turn to the downloads of into blah 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 blah. Okay, and for the sake of it, we'll download Ubuntu server. So I'm going to right click and copy link. Hopefully, this will work. Go back to the transmission, click open a torrent. I'll enter a URL. We'll just see if this will work by pasting this in. It's going to var lib transmission daemon slash downloads. So if I do upload, there we go. Downloaded from zero peers. Let's see if it starts to download. And there we go. You can see it has started to download. Other ways you can do it is you could actually save the .torrent file. And you could click choose file and add the torrent file, or you could add the magnet link as well. There we go. If we were to leave that, that would actually finish downloading that ISO. That's how you would build a basic torrent server using transmission. In my next tutorial, we will upgrade this because I will add a USB hard drive to it and we'll then modify transmission so that it copies to the USB hard drive, which obviously allows you more reliability, but also allows you higher capacities as well. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback in this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.